G'day guys, and welcome back to another episode of Red Pill Garage. Does your car's engine randomly stall on you whilst you're driving? Or is it hard to start? Is your check engine light on? You're probably thinking, what is causing this problem? Well, there's many things that can cause a car's engine to stall and start back up again, like a bad fuel pump, ignition system problems, and even a bad crankshaft angle position sensor. So first thing first is to extract the information from the car's ECM or computer. You can actually buy a code reader for as little as $20 to start off with. Okay, let's start the motor up and see what the symptoms are. Okay, we have a rough idle. The check engine light is also on and we have no tachometer reading. So that's usually the symptoms of a bad crank angle sensor circuit. Now that could be a number of things like the ECM itself or the computer, bad wiring, or the actual crank angle sensor itself. Next, what you want to do is plug in the scan tool or the code reader to extract the fault codes from the car's ECM or computer. Just as I suspected, code P0335, crankshaft position sensor circuit fault. I'll just get this engine started so I can show you the rough fight on the shake in the engine. It almost feels like a misfire. See it there shaking. Okay, you only need basic tools to check the crank angle sensor and you need a device such as a voltmeter to measure voltage and resistance. And don't forget your safety glasses. Okay, you may find you may have to raise your car off the ground with some makes and models and just make sure you use good quality jack stands with the emergency brake applied and chock up the rear wheels. Okay, this is where the engine and transmission meet. That's the transmission, and that's the engine side. That's the oil filter, and there's our crank angle sensor. And that's a 10 millimeter bolt that we have to remove. That should be pretty easy to come out. That's it. That's all it looks like. Pretty simple sensor. Okay, next you want to gently pry off the wiring harness clip. Now the connector. There it is there. This is a two wire sensor. One's the ground earth wire and the other one is the signal wire. Also just check to make sure you've got no corrosion in those terminals. You want to make sure they're nice and clean. The job of the crankshaft position sensor is to tell the ECM the position and the rotational speed of the crankshaft. Okay, there's a couple of simple tests we can do. We can do an ohms reading test and also check the voltage that it can produce. Okay, the new sensor actually shows 890 ohms. What you want to see is 800 to 1000 ohms. If you get a zero reading, the sensor is open circuit and probably burnt out. And the old one shows 914 ohms, so there's not much of a difference there. So this two-wire sensor is actually a, a magnetic type sensor that produces its own voltage and signal because it has an internal coil generating a magnetic field in combination with the reluctant tooth wheel inside the engine. And by waving the screwdriver over the sensor, I'm actually simulating the reluctant tooth wheel inside the engine so it's producing its own voltage. At this point, the sensor seems to be working okay, but I've made the decision to replace it anyway due to the age of the vehicle, and they're fairly cheap to buy anyways. Okay, that leaves us with either a faulty ECM or damaged wiring, so now it's a matter of tracing it all back and finding the problem. Okay, when installing the new sensor, just make sure you give the surface a quick wipe down, and you wanna lube up that seal, the O-ring seal around the sensor, just with some clean motor oil and they should just slip straight in. Then you can mount the wiring harness into the bracket. It should just snap into place, like so. Okay, it's just a matter of tightening up the 10 millimeter bolt, but don't go overdoing it too tight because the sensor's made out of plastic and you don't want to break it. I'm just gonna give it a quick scan just to make sure. We know we haven't fixed it because the sensor passed the test. But just wanna see the reaction here, what we get. 
So we can't clear the code because the fault is still existing. Face, okay, still there. No, it won't disappear. Okay, so next we're gonna to have to trace the wiring to the computer. So from the sensor, follow it down the side of the engine. You see it there. It goes up behind the battery, and there's the computer, the ECM. We see some corrosion on the outside of the ECM there, and that's a problem. It shouldn't be like that. Before I disconnect the wiring plug off the computer itself, the ECM, I wanted to show you guys something under the car that I noticed before. I've got my suspicions, and we can see a lot of cobwebs and nesting spiders. So it gives me an indication this car's been sitting around for a long, long time, which is a bad thing because you get a buildup of corrosion like we saw on the outside of the ECM. Really big spider web there. Now if a car sits around for too long, mother nature starts to take over. And because you don't have the heat produced by the engine, you get no evaporation, so you're constantly getting that build-up of condensation and everything staying moist under the bonnet and not drying out. Check this out, guys. Look at all that corrosion on the computer pins. That's not good at all. And that's our problem. So it's just a matter of cleaning all that up and on the plug side as well. There it is on the plug side. We're gonna clean all that up and that should resolve our problem for now. That's what happens when a car sits around on grass for too long. If you're gonna store a car, it's best to store it in the garage or under a carport on the concrete slab not on the dirt or the grass. The other side looks okay. That's the end result. And that's the plug side. It's come up pretty good actually. You couldn't even tell there was corrosion there previously. That's what you want to see. Okay, now it's time to refit the electrical plugs back to the ECM and snap the locks into place. And these are the basic tools I use to clean up that corrosion. You can actually use some electrical contact cleaner or mass airflow cleaner. It does the same job anyway. And just make sure you use a plastic brush, not a steel brush. If you're gonna use a steel brush, you'd have to disconnect the battery. But your best bet is to use a plastic brush not to cause any damage anywhere in the system. Would you have a look at this, guys? Now we have a working tachometer. And no more check engine light on the dash. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, that motor's nice and smooth now. No more misfire. Oh, that's great. Excellent. Okay, we're going to rescan it again. No DTC present at this time. No diagnostic trouble codes. Excellent. Absolutely stoked. On goes the engine beauty cover. Have a look how smooth that engine's running now. No more shake. Look at that, nice and steady. That's what you want to see. And that, guys, is how you diagnose and repair a crank angle sensor circuit. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button not to miss out on any future videos. 
and I'll see you on the next episode of Red Pill Garage. Thank you for watching.